Today I have something special, a very banged up LG G6. And while you may not think it's that special, I used to own and use one of these as my daily driver and I'm quite fond of it. It wasn't the first, but it was one of the first phones to utilize the ultra wide angle lens. Not to mention the lack of camera bump we see in today's devices, and it has a flat glass display. It's a solid phone. Today I'll be restoring this one with a twist. We're going to make a copper themed transparent G6. I've gotten some replacement parts, including a new display and frame assembly in gold, a new gold back glass, and a new fingerprint reader to match. I'm going to be doing some custom designing on the back glass though that should allow us to see the inner workings of the phone. This one has been opened before to check for functionality, so I've left the back glass separated. This isn't a repair guide by any means. Up top are seven Phillips screws that need to be removed. The antenna board likely won't be used in the final product, it's incredibly boring looking. Down below are four more screws. Even though this one contains the main loudspeaker for the phone, I'm going for design over function here. This will likely be going in a display case for my collection rather than being used that often. Disconnecting the battery is still pretty important. I want it to work once I'm done with it. LG has always been very repair friendly, so there are only a few things that need to be disconnected. Starting with the selfie camera and moving down to the display and charging port connector. The board is then free to be pulled up and out of the housing. The charging port is on a daughter board, which is the best design, and pops out easily as one whole piece. Now some small components can be removed from the original housing. I'll start with the coin style vibration motor. As cool as this would be to install without the cap, it would likely fail or just spray oil all over the internals. I'll leave it together for now. The headphone jack, yeah, this old thing is firmly adhered in place at the top, but should come out pretty easily after a nice wash with some isopropyl alcohol. There we go. Next to come out is the ear speaker at the top. It has a short ribbon with gold contacts that is incredibly easy to rip, while the speaker itself has a tendency to break in half. So I have to slowly work the speaker as well as the ribbon off the adhesive that holds them in place. Finally, I'll douse the battery with some alcohol to soften the adhesive and set it aside for a moment. Here's the new replacement housing. I'll get those small components installed into their new home. The charging port is incredibly easy and clips right into place, waiting to be sandwiched below the logic board. The headphone jack is the last thing that needs to be installed before I can finally lay the board into the frame. Our battery is quite stubbornly stuck in the old housing. Some repeated light prying with a shim will work it off the permanent adhesive that holds it down. This is quite the shift from the old LG G5 which had arguably the coolest battery removal, in the style of an ammunition magazine where it popped right out of the bottom. I miss those things. Next I'll give the back glass a bath of isopropyl alcohol to soften the adhesive that holds the fingerprint reader and power button shield in. A metal shim is able to pry around the circular shield before I switch to using tweezers to remove the pressure sensitive ribbon. Here's where things will start to get fun. This wireless charging and NFC coil is really a beautiful thing, but they've ruined it and coated it in this black plastic casing. I'll drop some more alcohol onto it to soften the adhesive that holds it to the plastic antenna frame. It's very stubborn like most of the adhesive in this phone, but some careful prying will get it off. This black plastic coating is incredibly annoying. I really wanted to show the gorgeous copper windings of the charging coil, and I've tried multiple solutions like razor blading it open, soaking it in acetone and other solvents, but nothing worked. That's when I got truly dedicated and visited the local hardware store for some fine grit sandpaper. After a bit of testing, I found that 400 grit does great at shearing off the top layer of black plastic and exposing the copper coil. However, it is still rough enough that it leaves gouges and grooves in that beautiful metal. I'll work my way up from 1000 grit to 2500 grit to smooth and polish the copper with an even shine. After a lot of sanding, I'll clean up this black powder with some alcohol and a paper towel. Now onto this back glass. I want it to be transparent, but still have some flair to the edges. I'll use a razor knife to score the colorful layer along the edges of the adhesive. This will allow me to remove most of the paint, but leave it on the area that the adhesive would normally cover. Next, I'll run my blade down the center. Glass is harder than the metal blade, so it doesn't even leave a scratch. Using angled blades, I'll start peeling back the laminate layer from the glass. 
Sometimes this comes off in one big satisfying piece. Other times it can flake apart into a powder. It just depends on what the manufacturer decides to use. Sometimes, like in this case, it can go both ways. The back glass is really coming along nicely. Thanks to scoring the edges by the adhesive, I can peel layer by layer without worrying about ripping the entire thing off. It would have been pretty cool to leave the gold tint you see here, but unfortunately there was no way to remove the enamel without also shredding the color away. I had plans of precision cutting around the camera lens bracket, but this proved to be quite difficult to work around. I ended up removing the camera lens assembly and cleaning off the laminate below. Here it is, I'm pretty pleased with the result, but now it's time for the power button and fingerprint reader swap. I need to get this round metal bracket off because it provides the area where the button clicks. The white sticker around the button itself is ugly and won't be used. I'll get this back glass wiped clean of fingerprints and fine debris, and while the power button won't really stay in place right now, it does need to be lined up properly for the final bit. The battery needs to be adhered down to the new frame with some double-sided TISA tape. It doesn't need to be anything crazy, just enough to hold it. Because I can't stick the power button bracket to the glass, and there isn't the antenna frame to hold it in place, I'm going to use a small bit of TISA tape to keep it centered. This will allow the button to still function without slipping around too much. I'll then get the finely polished wireless coil lined up. Without the plastic bracket to hold it in place, it won't really work, but again, I'm going for design over function. I'll do a quick functionality check to make sure it still powers on. Finally, the clean and transparent back glass can be pressed into place using the pre-installed adhesive under the golden paint that was left on the edges. This phone looks stunning. And here we have it, a fine addition to my also transparent Galaxy Note 7. Yes, the exploding one. This phone is absolutely gorgeous, and I love how the copper coil matched the gold accents so well. I truly had no idea if the colors would match up, and it seems my gamble paid off. Thanks a lot for sticking around this long if you did. Be sure to subscribe for more repairs and fun tech projects. And let me know in the comments below if you prefer this kind of video over the regular repair guides. I'd love to know. See you next time.